that the 2017 Ferrari GTC4 Lasso is at least one second faster around Ferrari's four in a test track than the Wagonoid FF that it replaces is meaningless. Partly, this is because it's essentially an update on the same car. But it's also because, according to Stefano Varesco, the man responsible for the Lasso's vehicle dynamics, improving lap times wasn't a target for the Lasso development team. More to the point, the all-wheel drive Lasso is clearly a GT car, a machine made for triple digit sweepers and deserted highways more than for Alpine switchbacks. Hot laps? They're in the Lasso's purview but certainly not in its crosses. So it matters little when we find ourselves in a parade of two buses, cyclists, and even sport bikes operating with a churlish disregard for velocity while climbing switchback roads in the Italian Alps. That a Ferrari should be so disrespected on its own turf is astonishing. That this indifference is demonstrated mostly by Germans on holiday is not. Possibly the drive route was chosen by Ferrari in a veiled attempt to highlight the Lasso's greatest virtue, that's a civility. Ferraris, after all, are universally wedded to the expectation of noise, soul scorching symphonic theatre. A 680 horsepower V12 powered Ferrari lacking such theatre is as contradictory as a black fire truck. Should the Lasso's double pane windows, quieter exhaust, and extra sound deadening still wave the prancing horse flag? Can an old man's Ferrari still be a Ferrari? More philosophically, should it be? The collective heart of the Typhosi just skipped a beat. Drives like a Ferrari still, it works. The lasso doesn't make itself small on these roads. It just swallows them whole. There's nothing subtle here, but there is a calm confidence about its abilities. Utterly stuck to the ground, the front tires follow every command from the lightly weighted steering wheel, and, in turn, the rest of the big Cooper bays. Don't think you're going to slide this car, it's not that kind of machine. It almost never overburdens its front tires, but neither does it want to power out sideways. If there's oversteer to be had, even at low speed, it demands the kind of inputs that often result in regret. V108 photos, the V12 delivers. Although it doesn't detonate the 2.1-ton lasso out of slow corners the way that, say, a Nissan GTR's twin turbo sex does, it pays off in an 8,250 revolutions per minute swell that makes engines with half the cylinders feel like playthings. Shifting the 7-speed dual clutch automatic at speed is hampered only by an infrequent need to find the column fixed shift paddles. It is a wildly flexible thing, this engine. But the lasso is not perfect. Its transmission vacillates counterintuitively in low speed maneuvers where precision is most required. The steering effort is so light that guiding it prudently can be challenging. And it's quieter than the FF, especially at idle. Its exhaust is intentionally hushed, which Ferrari says is to better suit owners who would drive these cars daily. Still, three hours later, after showing its taillights to every Ivaco truck in the Alps, we realize the truth about the Lasso is evident, Ferrari has created the world's best answer to the Porsche Panamera. But forget Germanic stoicism, this Forzit, our wheel drive hatchback is dripping with Italian flourish. Yes, it has two fewer doors than a Panamera. So what? If you're really concerned about hauling four people, buy a Mercedes-Benz class. All hips and haunches. The GTC4 Lasso is also approximately 100% easier on the eyes. And, yes, it's quiet, except at full throttle. Then it's months in September. And it's fast. Just a revised FF? Which brings us to the point, the GTC4 Lasso is Ferrari's replacement for its FF, a Ferrari whose identity was always in question, torn between pragmatism and passion. The Lasso fares better on style alone, with more aggressive rear fenders, sculpted sides, and a larger grille. Dimensionally, the two are virtually identical, both riding a 117.7-inch wheelbase, which is 1.6 inches longer than that of the recently revealed second-generation Porsche sedan. 
the Lasso's V12 gets a higher compression ratio from redesigned pistons. Coupled with equal length 6 and 2 exhaust manifolds, the engine tweaks yield an additional 29 horsepower and 10 lbft of torque over the FF. The dual clutch transaxle is unchanged and houses an electronically controlled clutch type limit slip differential. Although it's made up largely of the same hardware as the FF, the GTC4 Lasso's crux move is its unusual all-wheel drive system, which uses a top-speed gearbox driven directly by the nose of the crankshaft. The top speed's range is sufficient to cover the rear transaxle's first four gears. In fifth through seventh gears, the Lasso is a rear-wheel driver. Clutches on each front half shaft allow torque vectoring to each front wheel. A more efficient heat exchanger with increased thermal capacity enables the delivery of more torque to the front wheels in dry conditions. New hardware inside and out rear wheel steering is new to the Lasso. First introduced on the F12 TDF, the system's response depends on a number of variables, but most of the time it steers the rear tires in the same direction as the fronts. This strategy gives the driver more confidence by providing consistent feedback. According to Varisco, out of face rear steering, the kind that crabs the rear around corners, is reserved only for turning and limited to about 0.1 second per use to initiate car rotation. V108 photos. Inside, the Lasso has gone full Formula One, with virtually every secondary control mounted on the steering wheel. That includes the ignition, the headlights, the turn signals, the windshield wipers the Manettino Performance Simo dial, and the phone controls. There are roller switches on the back of the spokes controlling audio volume and instrument panel configuration. And, in a nod to the reality of rough roads, there's a button that temporarily softens the magnet or heological dampers without requiring the driver to switch out of sport mode. The infotainment is upgraded with an all new 10.3 inch touchscreen accompanied by a dedicated knob and button interface. Combined, these make quick work of audio, phone, and ventilation needs. The system is fast and intuitive and has usable controls, a rare trifecta, particularly among low volume car makers. The interior impresses, but no more than that of a Porsche at half the price. Stitched leather is everywhere. The round events are an awesome marriage of function and style. But the feckless flat bottom steering wheel would seem out of place in any road car. The rear seats are usable if the fronts aren't occupied by someone taller than six feet, but the back isn't a place you'll find adults volunteering to ride, at least, not those who've already experienced a V12 Ferrari. The GTC4 Lasso will cost about $300,000 when it hits Suez showrooms later this year. It's likely the most usable and civilized road car the company has ever made. But has its decency made it less virile? Less of a Ferrari? The answer comes as we switch off stability control, open the throttle, and bathe the Dolomites with the V12's glory call. No, this is still a Ferrari. And it is a good one.